Pokemon. Hello, hello. It's the Ace match. I just stole like the Fear Dragon intro. Oops. Ian, <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> in the bottom left side of the map, I are at Dusk Towers. It's the final game in this best of three. Confirmed at this point, the winner will advance to fight against Sulky. As Sulky did defeat Billowy and waits in the semifinals. We're going to be casting both semifinals today. So in the bottom half, as well as an update, Horror waits for either Mamuri or Choya. Mm -hmm. But anyways, in the bottom left, I just stole your thing now too. I'm just, a, I'm all kinds of a thief. <laughs> in the bottom left, we've got the Blue Terran player Keen. In the top right, as the Red Terran, it's Gumiho. So I don't have a particularly lot to say about Gumiho winning versus losing this, but for Keen, I actually do. It was really right around Gfinity, and I've referenced this so many times, I know, but like prior to this one tournament. Keen was like a mediocre looking guy at best. Like he really wasn't impressing us with a lot of his play. He'd show up, but he was just another player on the bracket type thing. Uh, ever since he had that good run of Gfinity, he's been looking pretty, pretty good actually, and uh, getting better most times we see him. I don't know if he's got what it takes to beat Gumio, but if he does, I certainly don't know if he's got what it takes to defeat Sulky. But he is one of the few players that I would now say has that potential to do so, rather than just writing him off as another random dude in the brackets. Certainly either one of these guys has the potential to beat Soul Key, but if I was betting, I would now always I would always bet on Soul Key. Um, I mean the only person I wouldn't bet on Soul Key against would be uh, Terran wise. Would be Beyond. Anyone yeah. else I think he wins. Yeah, well I mean we've actually had like what, five finals where Beyond versus Soul Key happens and Soul Key won one of them? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that was mainly through cheese, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, Beyond has become more and more unstoppable. Uh, certainly other Terrans are trying to match that, but no one's gotten close, so... Sulky is kind of reigning supreme right now. Man, I 100% I understand Beyond's choice to focus on the bigger Korean events rather than the Elima League. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I missed that guy already. He was so fun to watch, and... The worst part was we talked about this too. We're like, he's gonna break our hearts like Pult did, you know? If yeah. Pult was the Zotac See, hero, then got too big for us. What's worse too is that he's also gonna be focusing on Chinese leagues because he's a Chinese team. I mean, yeah. it was already kind of like up in the air if he was gonna in the Korean ones. Perhaps soon to have a Chinese wife. Yeah, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> I don't know, man. But like, that's gonna be really sad because you know you just don't watch a lot of Chinese stuff and. Gonna, like, we're gonna not gonna see him at all anymore. Well, so. the problem for that too isn't even just that it's Chinese it's stuff. Awkward. Like, oh, oh, okay, Ooh, that, that was, was super awkward. <laughs> that shouldn't have been awkward for Gumiho, but it almost was. Uh, just last comment on that is uh, a lot of people don't know this, but China has its own server, so uh, it's not easily accessible either. Because you'll notice it's not the StarCraft 2 default drop-down menu. This is getting a little out of hand for Keen, though. I was expecting there'd be something on the other side of the map, like why is this falling apart so badly? But I guess just his production fell off because he was relying on the Hellion to clean it up. So three SCVs go down. It looked like that SCV Mario'd him. Mario like popped on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll follow up with the Banshee, could be okay. Killing that one Marine early was pretty nice, and we look at Gumio's, or sorry, Keen's production, and Unless it's a unless it's a cyclone, and I'm imagining a cyclone. I'm hoping for a cyclone. There we go. Uh, if it wasn't gonna be a cyclone, he could have been in for some trouble. Mm. <clears throat> so, uh, once again, I believe Gumiho went for the more aggressive build, but uh, not nearly as aggressive as it was last game, where he was on one base for quite a while and had that that huge push. This time, it is more harassment based, and while his command center is still later, it's only like just halfway done. It's, uh, actually, I don't know. This this might have the capability of doing as much damage as last game, sure, but I don't I don't think so. Banshees are harassment based, they're only gonna get SCVs, they usually don't do not get the third base or the natural base to lift off. They really they really shouldn't anyway, so Gumiho is going to kinda make up for that natural not by attacking with a main push, but by going for a faster third, which is certainly we saw a lot of in Heart of the Swarm. And uh, as such, should be fine as they go into the mid game. Now, this Banshee, it looks like it will die. So, uh, Gumiho tries to furiously click it away to save it, but it doesn't work out. And uh, that's already not a great start to harass, but with the fast of the command center, as long as he can survive, the harassment not doing much damage is actually not so bad. I don't blame Gumiho for not doing a build like last game again, though, of course. Slayer Lat Crest. Much different than just towers and just the you know the fact that hey your natural is behind your main instead of in front. This drop goes into the main base 
And uh, doesn't really look like it's going to do much. Not with a Cyclone and Marines there. Same with the Banshee, though. Yeah, burns the scan. Stays alive. That's always good. Yeah, the drop. I would be shocked if this devastated. And with the Cyclone there, it should be good to defend. Lock on the Medivac. That'll chase it away. Yeah. Instant boost away, though. Nice eye off of Keen. But uh, Keen is now kind of the one that has to decide if he was able to scout this. Of course, he hasn't scouted it quite yet. Do I go for my own third command center and just take the blow that's going to be a little bit later? Or do I attack and then take a third command center? I mean, certainly he's looking towards a third command center eventually, and there actually goes down now. But without scouting that third base, I'm not sure he could tell otherwise, like with the amount of units or something like that. Um, he is just going to be behind if he just you know plays too passive. Uh, now this can sometimes, in rare cases, be an amazing drop, but... Again, I don't, I don't know. Gumiho is pretty well set up on the defense for things. Uh, I mean, stopping the third command center from landing. Oh, even reaching that spot. Oh, hey, look at that. I didn't think that would be ranged, <laughs> but that's Keen being a pro and me not. Cyclone gets picked off by the Banshees on the other side of the map. Turret's got detection, but it doesn't have range. And these two Banshees are be qu uh, quite annoying. Once I get the second supply depot, or even that cyclone, should it accidentally run into its range, but nothing's really happening there. A couple SCDs we picked off building barracks, that's always annoying. The gas guys are going down actually is quite annoying too, because he didn't take the other one at the, the natural. I'm surprised he's focusing on the barracks over at the tech lab, but he's a kill, that's not a cancel. Uh, too much focus elsewhere, cyclone's gonna get mass repaired as the medevac doesn't quite get killed. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> that repair hype, oh my Jesus, that repair was good. Drop of the main while this goes on. Lots of Marines here to respond, though, so it's not going to be as bad. Medivac gets picked Ooh. off immediately, and those Marines go down. Mm, was that worth? It's actually really <laughs> it's kind of an Gumiho's? interesting dynamic. Well, that's a lot of workers, so maybe. Yumiho's down in workers, but now far up in that army supply, so a counter drop, which is exactly what he's going for, could be dangerous for Keen. Yeah, ah, Banshees still live too. That's going to be really hard. You get the tanks huge up at the top of the ramp. You think you're all well and dandy because of the high ground, but the Banshees come in and snipe it off. I mean, ah, uh, this attack out of Gumio could be really good. You point out that army supply, but it's not just its not just like you've got more Marines. You've actually got more, like, everything. Uh, if he had picked up that oh, tech lab. Oh, has stim too. Ooh. Yeah, if he had picked up that tech lab, that would have been devastating. But you're right, he's got stim over his opponent. No combat shields, just stim. Oh, these SCVs got nowhere to run. Oh, he's, he's going to pay back that damage mess. he took. Yeah, I mean, he already kind of paid back to a better, better army, but now, evening up the workers, this is... This looks like it's going to go in Gumio's favor. Takes down that depot tank, it's dropped, but... I mean, one Viking is not going to snipe these medevacs very easily. Mm -mm. One tank... Oh, well, the message turned out. Oh, well, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Gumio's drop's going to start flopping, but SCVs start down to some friendly fire. A couple of actual kills get popped off. I mean... This was an attack that Gumiho needed to have happen. If he didn't get that damage done, he was so far behind the SCVs, this game really would have sucked for him to play out longer. Now it's a somewhat even worker count, and he's got upgrade lead galore. He's got a worker, uh, sorry, an army lead too. I mean, Gumiho's looking fantastic. Yeah. It was always up to him. Uh, oh, geez, you know what? It's not even just that he's going to have combat shields. Yeah. Unless so you've played a TVT where you've had or not had combat shields when your opponent has or hasn't as well, like... It, you cannot describe how big of a deal this upgrade is. <laughs> Honestly, even without doing that drop and getting the SCVs back to a you know a similar similar account, although it's back down to a seven, uh, he still had such a good army with such good upgrades that a main attack had a lot of potential, and it still does. We see here, just pushing on and a little bit miscontrol of the Marines on the backside, just waiting, but Thomas still shields. enough. Thomas shields huge for this fight. Thanks, still gonna kill a lot. And then Gumio had brought his tank with him, maybe could have done a lot more damage, but leveling out the army, trading army for army, Gumio still comes out ahead, and that's what matters the most. 1-1 one, one is now done as well, and there's a win of opportunity until Keen has combat shields where this game is so dangerous for him. And even then, it still might be too late. Yeah, Gumiho has his third base down, he's trying to get the SCV count back up, and he's on his way to 2-2. Two, two. This attack, it might be pushed back. I don't know, it's, it's very close. Keen definitely has to, to be the one more on top of his micro, but... Yeah, Gumi's getting a bit greedy diving he in the way he Like He could have just zoned out on the top side and denied mining. Picked he off into the funnel in, but this is getting messy and bad. That medevac's low, oh god. I mean, good job on, on Keen for evening a lot of these things up, but it was to, to Gumiho to be able to use the advantage that he had, which was in 
combat shields as well as the 1-1 one -one upgrade. And technically he did. I mean, it's, uh, it's from the get-go, Kina's been kind of the more, uh, I don't know, I don't know if passive is the right word, but uh, things could happen to him and he could be fine. Gumio had to make those things happen. He had to get the fast of the command center. He had to get the drop to deal, yeah. you know, return SCV damage. And he had to do something with his combat shields and 1-1 one -one upgrade because he was still down on those SCVs. And he's done all of that, but that just makes it look like a very even game. And that's really one that he is going to absolutely win. Man, I hate that I had to uh, swap my glasses. <sighs> I hate wearing these glasses on a gas. Sorry, ADD guys, but the other ones hurt my ears too much. These headphones are so tight. Never have I ever one of my Corsair headsets. So <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so with the continued pressure from Gumiho, I do start worrying he's starting to throw away too much. Keen's got up on upgrades, both combat shield stim and that 1 1. Gumiho will have a 2 2 lead fairly and for a small period of time. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, his over dedication to just reach out and kill. Like, like, almost just trying too hard is, a, I guess, a funny way to phrase it, uh, is what really got Keen back into this. If Gumi had bulked up all of his forces and then pushed him with his one glorious, magnificent combat shield push, I think he would have actually de devastated Keen. Yeah, he was up, like, 20 armor supply with combat shield, so... Probably. But that 2-2 upgrade is still very important, so that still technically puts Gumiho in the lead here. It's just, you know, yeah, that's, that's, base too. that's one drop away from not being in the lead. That's one miss micro of the tanks away from being in the lead type of deal. So it's certainly still anyone's game. And, uh, you know, Keen did have a good defense, so it's, it's anyone's game mostly because, you know, he deserved it. Well, at this point, do you think Keen's going to be looking towards actually trying to continue expanding? Because it feels like, you know, you've been taking a lot of damage throughout the course of the game. Do you actually assess that you're fine? Because I feel like that's going to be a hard point to recognize. You certainly, I think in a game like this, it's Keen who wouldn't feel very comfortable about pushing out. Because yeah, Gumi always oh. had control over this God. game. Doom drop. Uh, and this is exactly the reason why you would feel bad about pushing out. <laughs> it might be a doom drop. The Thunder Terror tried to scout it, at least with some warning, but that still wasn't enough. This is very oh, entrenched. Gets it gets on top of the upgrades. Kills the armory. That was really nice. Uh, pick up a lot of deep with my supply block, Keen, but of course we have counter drops going off, but uh, Gilmio's no got way more at home than Keen does. Yeah, this actually is just the blink of an eye. It went from a very even game where Keen was going to have even upgrades to a game that Gilmio is absolutely going to win now. Should absolutely win. We'll just put that asterisk there because every Terran player is fully capable of throwing Marines at the tanks. Scan's gone off left and right. There's uh, no chance really now for Keen to catch up in those upgrades. His armory is down, although he is trying See, this, to rebuild it pretty quickly. This goes pretty rough for Gumiho, actually. Try to get on top of the tanks and just finish them off. I mean, this is still good. I'm not going to pretend like it's not, but that was a pretty big donation of his own marine army, which he needed to keep the tanks alive, so now he loses control of the main. But that's still okay, because here we go, round two, coming for the third. Yeah. Oh, well, the real round two. <laughs> Uh, Gumi also has, of course, the upgrade lead once again, as well as that fourth command center. So even if he does, you know, lose a couple of bad engagements, he could afford to lose a couple of bad engagements. So once again, <laughs> having uh, some bad engagement, losing all of his marines, leaving that tank all types of alone. He keeps dedicated. Like he's he's pulling himself too thin trying to do these dedications to killing Keen. If he would just actually take a moment, deep breath, Gumiho, and kill Keen, he kills Keen. Yeah. But he's sprinting while he's already out of breath. Now he's got that big army here once again. Let's see if he can do it. Uh, Keen is split up with his forces pretty badly. And that tank's going to pick up SCVs. Very important mining. But those tanks on the high ground pushing back the SCV, the Marines once again. This uh, is a slow death, but it certainly is still a death for Keen, whose only hope right now seems to be in a once again... Either Gumiho overextending it three or four times, or by doom dropping. Unfortunately, his last, uh, not really doom drop, but drop did not go very well. It was purely Marines, and Gumiho had enough defense back at home. So Keen really has nothing kind of going for him. And uh, well, I mean, I'll give him credit where he still he got the armory back up, so he's at least got three three in the way. He's not totally falling out of this game, and uh, I just feel like Gumiho keeps overextending so many times. This fourth base is great. This fourth base is why he hasn't lost from these terrible, terrible engagements. But if he keeps taking them, at some point, he's going to be able to capitalize on it. Yeah, he'd have to throw away a, like half of his army, though, to really 
give Keen a chance to capitalize on it, and that's simply by counterattacking, because Keen is obviously the one on the timer here with no fourth command center. I mean, sure, he'll lift his main or his natural or something eventually and get a fourth command center, but it's still not quite the same as having a fourth that's a planetary and all nice and saturated. Upgrades to finish up for Gumiho. Uh, actually, kind of surprising that they haven't been on top of their vehicle upgrades. So only just finishing now for Gumiho, the plus one. Well, I mean, Ke Keen did try and get one, but the armory uh, sniped earlier was the shutdown over there. I am more surprised Gumio didn't take advantage of that, but either way, he will have it for this fight by the looks of it. If not, it'll be just barely done. Uh, tank count for Keen is actually pretty darn good. It's the marine count for Gumio that really gives him love for this battle. A little bit more to waste and a little bit more fodder to have. Doesn't quite get that medevac, but he does flank the tanks nonetheless. Gonna flank the Marines on top of this. Stimming in for the win, looking for killing the rest of Keen's army. That's gonna do it, Gumiho. He takes the series two to one.